Alright, so good day learners. So today I'm going to discuss about um, how to maintain the homeostasis of the nervous system together with endocrine system or how they are going to working together the nervous system endocrine system to maintain the homeostasis <coughs> for our objectives for today so describe how the nervous system coordinates and regulates this feedback mechanism to maintain homeostasis so homeostasis so what is homeostasis homeostasis it is the state when reach each part of the body functions in equilibrium with other parts meaning um, the word equilibrium equilibrium so we have meaning balance all right so this is just right if this is too cold if this is too hot so it should be balance just like in our body so the different substances the different hormones the different um, body activity should be balanced so homeostasis so these are the nervous and endocrine system maintain a normal range of the following variables so we have in the body temperature amount of water in the body amount of metabolic waste in the cell blood calcium level hormones in the body in the body so let's start with the nervous system controlled for example let us study about the homeostasis of the body temperature all right so this is the feedback mechanism so our normal body temperature diba our normal body temperature is 37 degrees or 37.5 degrees celsius and sometimes sometimes in our body pag sob pag tumaas ang body temperature natin so ano mafi-feel mo mainit tanga mainit ka or nagkakaroon ka ng sakit or feel mo nilalagnat ka then kapag ganan so your body will respond okay on the part of your hypothalamus so to keep the equilibrium within your body so main special area sa brain natin na tinatawag na hypothalamus then magsasend siya ng signal to other organs called effectors so ito yun meron tayong nerve signals magsasend siya called effectors to act and balance out the existing stimulus so meaning the blood vessels so ito yung blood vessels mo magsasensya ng signal so yung blood vessels mo ang mangyayari dyan um, will undergo vasodilation okay magkakaroon ng vasodilation or magdideliate yung surface ng blood vessel mo and on that it will deliate to allow increase in the blood flow so meaning para mag expand siya para yung blood flow ay maging mabilis so yung warm blood flows closer to the skin making the heat radiate through air so it will cool down so on that part ang mangyayari sa katawan mo since mataas yung temperature mo feel mo mainit ka so mangyayari sa katawan mo magre-respond at pagpapawisan ka. Ano? Di ba minsan pag may lagnat ka, pag mataas, nagja-jacket ka para pagpawisan. So, pag pinagpawisan ka na, so, having your, um, the hypothalamus sends signals to the sweat gland to secrete the sweat to the surface of the skin to take away heat from the body. Di ba? Pag pinagpapawisan ka, inaalis yung, yung sweat, inaalis yung init sa katawan. And these adjustments are our body way to counteract the increase in temperature and keep our internal temperature stable to avoid overheating. So, nagkakaroon na ng feedback mechanism doon. Alright? So, meaning, pag ang katawan natin ay tumaas ng 37 degrees, so, magiinit ka, kaya yung hypothalamus, 
magsasend ng signal kay sweat gland sa skin, yung vasodilation magdi-delete para bumilis ang or magkaroon ng takbo ng mga blood para pagpawisan ka. Ano? Pag pinagpawisan ka na, so mawawala na yung heat sa katawan mo, pabalik ka na ulit sa gantong temperature, meaning nagkaroon ng balance. Now, what if naman your body temperature get low? Ano? Bumaba. For example, 37, um, naging 36.5. So, meaning ikaw ay nilalamig. Alright? So, pag nilamig ka, magsasend ulit ng signal si hypothalamus. Yan, magsasend siya ng sig signal sa iyong skin. And magkakaroon naman ng constrict of the surface in the blood vessel. Meaning, um, ang mangyayari dyan, so, magkakaroon ng narrow magnanarrow yung blood vessel mo and to reduce the slow um, slow blood flow sa iyong katawan. Kaya mangyayari, di ba minsan pag nilalamig ka, nagsishiver ka. Ano? Sometimes nagsishiver ka and or nagjajacket ka minsan para mainitan ka. Ano? So, shiver. Eh, parang pinapagpag. Kita niyo yung mga manok. Di ba yung manok? Pag minsan parang pag giniginaw, yung feather nila parang nagsishiver sila. So, para bumalik sila sa gantong body temperature. So, yung katawan natin nag adjust So, we have what we call the feedback mechanism on that. And that is one of the responsible I see nervous system. Kasi from nerve signal mag a magsasend ng signal. And also, sa hypothalamus, sa mga glands natin. Sila naman yung responsible for that maintenance. Alright? So, that is the role of homeostasis. To maintain. To maintain, that is our term. Maintain or stable or equilibrium. Next, another example is the regulation of blood sugar. So, this is the feedback mechanism. So, our blood sugar level, so we have 90 mg per 100 ml. So, kapag tumaas yung blood sugar mo, so we need sugar in our body enable for us to have an energy, di ba? Because in every food that we are going to eat, for example, if we're going to eat a carbohydrates or rice, so rice is a kind of in a biomolecule we ha that is considered as in a biomolecule as a carbohydrate and we all know that carbohydrates meron siyang saccharide so in that saccharide meron siyang glucose and in every one mole of glucose so meron nagkakaroon tayo ng 32 adenosine triphosphate so sugar produces also energy in our body so meaning pag sobra yung sugar mo sh yung blood sugar level mo alam ba tumaas naging ito yung normal kasi ano kaya pag nagpa blood test ka blood sugar test pag tumaas alam ba nag 110 150 kasi we have ceiling 90 to 100 pag tumaas sa 150 200 300 meaning mataas yung blood sugar level mo so, mangyayari dyan, for example, minum ka ng coke or kumain ka ng mga dessert. So, yung, dahil mataas yung blood sugar level mo, si pancreas, sa part ng endocrine system, si pancreas magre-release yan ng hormones na insulin. Ano? So, si insulin, ang gagawin ni insulin, siya ang sa body cells take up sugar from blood. Ano? So, siya yung magme-maintain. So, siya yung maintain ng iyong um, blood sugar level. Meaning, kung labis, yung blood sugar level mo, siya yung mag, magbababa. Ano? Kasi, sasabihin niya kay, and also responsible din si liver, because in the liver, ito yung nag stir yung sugar, and it reduces appetite. Alright? Kaya nga minsan, pagkakain ka ng food, pag inuna mo yung dessert o yung mga matatamis bago yung main course, na wawalan ka na ng appetite. So, the other one naman, pag naman mababa, bumaba yung blood sugar level mo, so, si pancreas, yan, si pancreas, magre-release naman yan ng glucagon. 
ano so sa glucagon ibig sabihin siya yung magdadagdag um, siya yung hormones na responsible para sabihin kay liver na or liver mag-release ka na ng sugar ano so siya nagtitri parang mag, magtitrigger to na ah gutom na gutom na siya parang so yung si liver responsible para mapataas yung blood sugar level and to maintain on that okay on that on this on this level okay that 30 mg per 100 ml so ito yung ating normal level ano kaya nga pag napapa-check up ang tinitingnan ay yung kung normal ba siya or hindi ano may mga range so this one this is another kind example of homeostasis The other one we have the gas exchange, the breathing and gas exchange in the respiratory system. So we all know that breathing is one way to control the balance inside our body. And while we breathe, di ba, pag gumihinga tayo, so gas exchange will then occur, letting our body to supply the cells with the oxygen and take away the waste in the form of carbon dioxide. So, we all know na pag gumihinga tayo, we, have, we are inhaling oxygen and we are exhaling carbon dioxide. And with that pattern, so para ma-maintain ng homeostatic control inside sa body, for example, di ba, for example, naglakad ka or nagjogging or ikaw ay may mga ginawang activities like nagdance ka, nag-exercise for a long time meaning yung muscle mo yes so yung muscle mo ay magka-counteract siya at kailangan niya ng maraming blood uh, oxygen supply sa muscle kasi pag nagkukulang ng oxygen supply sa isang muscle tumataas yung lactic acid and sometimes that could cause muscle cramps. Okay? Now, to maintain that, so, ang mangyayari, the increased demand of oxygen will be detected by the sensors of aorta. So, dito sa aorta ng heart. So, the sensors of aorta will then instantly react by means of sending signal to the brainstem. So, yung si aorta, magsasend siya ng signal kay brainstem. Our brainstem is the medulla oblongata. So, that our brainstem to act and balance out the imbalances between the current amount of oxygen in the body can provide and the amount of oxygen needed by the muscles to operate. So the medulla oblongata at the base of the brain will now send a signal to the heart. Yan, so magsasend siya ng signal kay heart to pump. Okay? So meaning, nakakaroon na ng ano, so from aorta kay brain so breathing control sa kay brain stem tapos siya na yung magsasabi kay si medulla oblongata magsasabi na siya kay heart na oh kulang siya ng ano oxygen supply oh kailangan mo na mag pump oh heart kailangan mo na mag pump heart ng mag pump mag operate mag operate ka na kasi kulang na ng oxygen supply and on that the brain will now send a signal to the heart to pump blood faster to have a faster blood circulation and supply the increase in the oxygen demand. So, meaning, on this, mag, para magkaroon na ng oxygen supply. Alright? Kaya nga minsan, kaya nga, ano sila, partner. So, kapag ikaw ay hiningal, di ba pag hiningal ka, di ba meron bang hiningal na mabagal yung takbo ng puso? Diba, wala naman na normal. So, ibig sabihin, um, in-exceed mo yung capacity ng organ mo to uh, to function. Kaya nga, alam nag-dance ka, nag-exercise, hihingalin ka kasi si heart mo, um, sasabihin ni aorta, yan kay medula, o mag-pump, um, tapos si medula, sasabihin niya naman kay aorta, o mag-pump ka na ng, ano, magpump ka ng mabilis kasi nagkukulang ng oxygen supply. ba? Diba? So, like, for example, pag sinisipr, ba? Diba? Pag dinidefibr, defibr, o yung using the defibrillator. So, pag sinisipr, inaano to? 
para magkaroon ng oxygen dito. So, this one, just to maintain the homeostasis or the gas exchange ng kasi pag kukunti yung oxygen supply, madaming carbon dioxide ang mapuproduce. Kaya, so, dapat kailangan siyang ma-exhale. Alright? So, this these are the examples of homeostasis in our body. So, thank you for listening. God bless you. And, bye!